So the shell. Somebody asked what the shell is before. Um, the shell is really an interpreter for a, a programming language. Like Python has is kind of like a shell because you can run Python in interactive mode. Um, so normally, our, what we've all been doing is interactive mode at the shell. Um, you can also take all those commands and make them into their own little program and uh, you know, automate stuff that you get tired of typing over and over again. Um, the first thing you need to know about doing that, let's say we want to create a program, um, use whatever editor you want, or don't follow. Um, don't. Hello. So now we have this empty file. Um, there's this special thing called the shebang. It's the, uh, the pound and the exclamation point. The operating system uh, reads that and it's, uh, it does some magic. And whatever program comes after the shebang is what runs the rest of the text in, uh, in the file. So we can say, hello world. So that's our Hello World program. You could also use Emacs or whatever editor you like at this point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Hello World. Um, now we see that Hello is um, doesn't have the execute permission, so we want to make sure it's executable. So now we have a shell program. And we can run that program. You need to uh, give a relative path using the dot slash because of the uh, the path environment the variable that Andy showed you. Uh, Hello.sh does not exist in one of those directories. So to run a program that's not in the path, you need to give a full path or a relative. And we see it prints hello world. Okay. Um, these programs can take arguments, okay? Um, the first argument is zero, and that is the name of the program you actually ran. Um, then the rest of the arguments are just one, two, and so on and so forth. I think once you get past nine, you have to do something special, but for now, you know, we have zero, one, two, okay? Um, if we run our program now, uh, see, the zero that we printed out, um, zeroth argument is the name of the program, and then um, all the, it's the argu top of the yeah, all, all the arguments that you haven't set are just gonna be blank. So now if we run hello with um, some text, we see that we print out the first argument and the second argument, okay? Um, there's also some special, there's always special stuff. I so, get the step where you have in foobar, what did you just? So I just ran the program, okay. like let's say I had some, I, you know, this was a more fully featured program and I had a whole bunch of options. Um, one of those options might be dash h to print out the help. Mm -hmm. So now we see that we print out dash h. So what I would do is read through the arguments within the program, look for the dash h, and if I see it, then I print out the help output. Okay. So an argument's just anything that gets specified after you type in the name of the program on the command line, and then you can access those within the program itself using dollar sign and then. Um, if you have more. Um, you know, if you have a whole bunch of arguments, but you don't handle them, it's not an error. So you see we still only print out the first two arguments. Okay. Um, Do you have a question? Yeah. Oh, sorry. No. Oops, no. Okay. Are you stuck in them? No. no. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. Um, there's um, a special mm -hmm. argument called star, which will automatically expand to all the arguments that you passed in. So we can run our program and see now that no matter what we put on the command line as arguments to our programs, that dollar star um, 
expands on all of this. And this will all be one of the more than uh, than nine, because you said that if it's okay. more than nine, then, uh, so if it's more than nine, and if the star, ex the star works. However, that's just if you want to like print out and, and debugging. You want to print out what your what your command was given to run with, um, or if you want to take all the arguments that your command got and pass them to another command because you're just writing a wrapper or something. Um, if you want to get to say number eleven, I think you have to put it in brackets like that. In real life, you never have that many arguments. Well, if you do, yeah, I mean, if you do, you, you're going to run your arguments through a special program called getopt, which will reformat your arguments for you. Um, yeah, so you need to just put it in the, the curly, the curly brackets. There's also something similar to the um, uh, dollar star, and that's um, dollar at. And when you put it in, when you don't have it in quotes, it's the same exact thing as dollar star. Okay. When you have it in quotes, it preserves um, the words that you pass in. So um, so let's say I have um, a B C D. What I'm intending my program to be is having three arguments, A, B, C, and D, okay? The only way to preserve those if you're using the dollar star or dollar at is with at in quotes. Um, we're gonna have to go a little further to actually show the difference between what happens with the white space. Um, okay, so just like any other programming language, Bash has if statements, for loops, while loops, um, you know, the general tools. Um, the, for if statements, um, the syntax is pretty simple. It's if, and then two, there's a, there's a one brace version, but we're always just gonna stick to the two. Um, and then this is a built-in command. It looks weird, but we can actually see that. Um, we can see all the syntax for the, that command. Um, I don't have a lot of screen real estate, but it, it is an actual command. So um, it's got a bunch of built in options like uh, dash f means um, is it a file? So um, I have, we all should have files called .rc. This assumes you're in your home directory. Yeah. And you, so you end it with D. Okay, even if you don't have an else, you have to end it with D. Okay, so this is also a valid uh, if statement. Okay. So you see that I do have a file called that bash rc, and I printed true. Am I going to fast questions? Conditionals? Um, so the you can also do things like compare strings. So um, if abc does not equal abc echo true, um, then this will. so much so far is that every program has a return value. Um, the two simplest programs, there's a program called true, and there's a program called false. False will always return false, true will always return true. So, for example, we can run true, and if, if true or true, um, we can also run false, 
And these are, again, these are programs that are actual files on your computer. They're also built in. So we run that and we see that if false, it prints false. Okay. So the, so the argument to the if statement is a program, and the re program's return code is going to dictate if the conditional is true or false. Question? Um, is it possible just to put in little tidbits of programming into the command line without making a file or anything? Yeah, so you can type all these things into the command line, um, but Sometimes it's more difficult because you, when you're looking, at, when you're typing if statements, you generally want it to be on multiple lines. And can you only do one line or something? No, like you, you can do more or... lines, but it gets messy. Like it's hard to indent that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then when you, if you want to scroll back up through your history, so if I yeah. say if true, then and what what do you do to get the new line? Is it just enter? Just enter. And then when you when you close out the statement, it all run everything for you. But now when you go back and you go back through your history by hitting up, it's going to push well, it all onto one line. Yeah, so you, if you spend point. your time typing something nice and complicated, um, you're, you're not going to be happy. So if you, if you start to do a lot of stuff, I would put it in a file. Um, so what was I Does it true have a value associated with it, or is it just, just a statement? It's a program that has, um, so every basically every program, when it exits, there's a special integer that it returns. And by convention, if that program returns zero, it means that everything went OK. And if it's anything other than zero, it means there's some error. And then when you're looking through man pages, a lot of times, um, they'll list the error codes at the bottom. And it'll say, like, uh, if the exit code is 1, then um, the file, the configuration file didn't exist. And if the exit code is two, it means you didn't have permissions to do what you're asking to do. Okay? So the if uses the exit code of the program to determine if the, the truthiness of, of what you did. So back to the angle, the, um, the double brackets, this is just a program that returns zero or something else depending on what you did. Um, so like I said, there's a whole bunch of um, flags you can do, like dash D will return true if what you pass in is a directory. Um, there's ones for empty files. And then there's also the general comparisons, like comparing strings. So a lot of times you're going to want to compare, you know, if path equals dot, you know, that's going to be false. Okay? So it's, <coughs> it's uh, not give the value to it, it's equal, just equal. Yeah, this is not an assignment. Okay. Um, also, you can do double equals though. At all. I think they have both, but they, I don't think there's a difference between them. Single and double equals. Can cross do each two? That's for numerical values. Um, so this, these uh, double brackets aren't really good when you're doing numerical stuff. Um, so, for example, hopefully this is not going to be octal. Um, Normally, you'd expect this to be true, okay? But it should be false. Uh, yeah, so because um, it's actually comparing the string values not the number. If you want a number, uh, one second, uh, there's a different set of um, cl uh, brackets, and it's just double parentheses. And they're much better suited for mathematical uh, comparisons. Um, I think, oh, and when you're in the math mode, I think you do need Yes. In Vim? I'm going to stop doing that. <laughs> uh, so in Vim, if you do an uh, exclamation point, yeah. it means run what I'm about to run in the shell, just like when we did SFTP. 
uh, you can kind of jump out of the shell to run one command. It's just an exclamation point. Okay. And then the percent means? The, oh, the percent expands to the name of the file that you're currently editing. So like a, a, this would mean write the file, save it to the disk, and then run it is something that I went through in a lot. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I want to ask: Are there any utilities for debugging bash code, or is that not normally necessary? Uh, what do you mean, like stepping through, or yeah, something like that? Just so you, if you have, I don't bear graph. Yeah. Sort of I don't know of anything. Warnings. I don't know if anything to step through, but if, if there's an error, the bash interpreter will give you the line number and character. Oh, it does. So, so and yeah, it'll it'll hold your hand. But well, you can you can run bash. You run bash with the so by default it's not going to give you warnings like it's only going to give you errors, which isn't always what you want. So it'll let you do stupid things that you probably shouldn't be doing. Um, if you run bash with there's a flag you can put in that bash that basically puts it into error mode that'll give you a lot more feedback as to what's going on. You don't need to set that I don't think so. Maybe, but I I'll, I'll email it out afterwards. But um. Yeah, you can get, there is ways to debug dash scripts. So, yeah. Okay. Um, what else? Okay, so you, we also have for loops. They're pretty useful. The syntax looks like this. You A lot of times you want to do um, a for loop with a glob on every file in the directory. So for f in star, do echo f is going to print out every file, right? It's like our own little ls. Yeah. And that just, that just prints out a list of files that I have in my home directory. Okay. Um, another thing that you do a lot with for loops is maybe you want a sequence of numbers. Um, Bash has this nice little Brace expansion, so I can print out zero to ten, for example, or one to ten, whatever, I, whatever I did. Um, and if you want kind of uh, zero padded integers, you can just say zero, zero, ten, and that'll pad everything nicely. Question. Um, okay, so now I can show you the difference between um, the dollar star and dollar at. So now what we're going to do is loop through all of our command line arguments and print them out one line at a time. So if we can run this command with ABC, and we should just print out ABC. However, if we want to group some of these arguments, because it has a white space. And somebody was asking me a few weeks ago about white space. Um, and we use the star. We, the B and the C get broken up because of the white space. If you want to preserve the white space, you need the at in quotes. And now we keep the B and C together. Yeah, yes. Follow that. Okay. Um, you can also define your own functions. The syntax is just the function name followed by parentheses. And then the body of the function is in uh, curly, curly brackets. So our Now we've defined a function, and we can yeah. run it by just typing the function name just like it's any other command. Okay? Type it twice. What? Type it twice. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, the functions get their own. So, so first of all, nothing ever goes in the um, the parentheses right here, like in another programming language, you don't put your arguments in here. This is just syntax, so it's just the function name. Uh, the functions get arguments just like the, the script does. So 
um, we can run foo with different arguments, okay? And now we print out what we passed to foo, okay? Um, and the stuff that you, the arguments for the script itself don't get passed down to foo. If you wanted to do that, you would um, use the that. So that would pass through all your arguments to your function within your script. Um, and functions are useful for kind of automating things that you would type a few lines at a time. And you can put them in, we showed you a second ago, your bash rc file. This is a file that gets run when you start your shell. And um, see, so I have one function that's a wrapper around ENP to do some cool stuff. Um, and you, you can group all your functions in there and use them whenever you log into a shell. Okay, variables. Um, to assign to a variable, it's just var equals var equals value. No space on either side of the equal sign. Okay. Um, if the value is has white space in it, it needs to be quoted. Okay. Um, and then if you want to pass your variable to a function, you also need to continue to quote it. Basically, just to be safe, you should always quote your variables because uh, they get expanded and turned in from one token into two tokens. And that's generally not what you want to have happen. Okay. You could even... Um, set a variable equal to a command name, like ls, and then run the command like that. And it should just run ls. Yeah. Okay. And then, so maybe you want the command to be ls-a to print out the files with a dot in front of them, which are kind of just by convention hidden. Um, you, you don't need to quote there at var now. If you do quote it, what's going to happen is it's going to look for a file that's literally called ls space dash a in your path, and it's going to throw an error. Okay. Um, so now there's kind of a, a little bit of a difference between regular variables and environmental variables. Usually, the stuff that's all capitalized is an environmental variable. That's just a convention. So if I um, just, you know, if I have these variables set and I run a, another command, um, they won't see these. If I want them to see them, like let's say I want to run bash, uh, bash has some variables to um, customize how your history is handled. Like, I think just history is the number of lines. Let's say I wanted to run bash with extra history. Um, I would need to export. You can just, you can assign to history like that, and then you can export it. Or you can just do it all in one. Oops, I do that. Export. And so when you export a variable, it means that it's, it can be viewed by any program that you run in the environment that you started in. You can also set a variable just for uh, the program that's going to have to be run, like we talked about. Um, so like one of them that I, I like is PS format. You can set a whole bunch of stuff before you run PS, and that will um, customize the columns that PS prints out for you. Before you use export the program, you don't know what history is. So within, within my own script, at this point within my own script, um, I can view history and do stuff with it if I put a dollar in front of it. At this point, if I run another command, uh, it can also see that history. Okay, And so that's what END prints out, is all the environmental variables, not all the variables. So those are these are all environmental variables, and they're used by other programs to configure how 
how they operate. You can kind of think of like exporting it makes it a global variable that's yeah. been accessible for everything, whereas otherwise the variable only lives within the scope of your file for that script. Um, you can, there's a thing called command substitution where you can, the syntax looks like this. This is actually useless, but uh, this will take the output of ls star and store it in bar. Okay, uh, that one's not that useful because you just use the blah, but the ps dash ah, maybe I want to store that in a variable. Is this different from the back tick? This is preferred over the back tick. There's another form of this, which looks like this. Um, so you might see that online if you're getting help to do something. Uh, but if you're writing your own code or your own script, stick with the, the syntax dollar and the parentheses. So um, when do we use dollar? Like, what are the time when we use dollar? Every time we um, so, so dollar is going to be used when you want to refer to a variable that you set. Mm -hmm. It's also used when you do command uh, substitution. That's the term for this. Um, you don't have to quote the output here. Like, let's say the output of ps ah has a whole bunch of white space in it. Uh, you actually don't have to quote it, and everything will be stored in bar. Okay. This gets used a lot. Maybe we'll look at an example, like renaming. But yeah, you you end up using this a lot because it's really helpful to have a variable that stores the output of some other program that you can then go act on. Um, bash also has arrays. The syntax is just without the dollar sign. So like now we have A, B, C in my array. Um, so var automatically becomes array if I assign array type of stuff. What if we use a dollar sign here? If you do use a dollar sign here, it's going to try to run a command called A with the arguments B and C. Okay. Um, by default, um, if you access the array name, it's only going to give you the first uh, element. If you want one in particular, you need to use the, the braces again, and then I can print out uh, B or no C. That's what I'm going to print out now. Okay. Um, and then there's a special syntax, kind of like the dollar a, which is in the whole thing in quotes with an at, and that'll print out um, all the elements of the array, or it'll give you all the elements in the array with their white space preserved. And so that's like a real key thing in Bash, is keeping your white space preserved because it gets expanded a lot, and that's why you want to keep quoting things. Um, so you would do this if you wanted to do a for loop over all the elements in the array. Okay. So what does EL do? What? EL for? EL is just the variable I chose to call each element in the array when I get to it. Okay. Um, you can also append to an array. So I want something with quotes. So now I want DE to be one element, not two. So I need to keep it in quotes. And now we keep it at DE. If you don't use the at here, then you use the star, like with the dollar sign, or you forget to put this in quotes, then that DE is going to be split up into two separate, two separate things. Hmm. Questions? Uh, Bash also has associative arrays which may or may not be useful to you in the future. And to, to use them, you actually have to declare them. So now I have var, some associative array. And I can say, associate array, you put an exclamation point here. And that'll just print out food. Um, there's also, so what would you access? 
what, how would you access uh, an element associated with that? So they want to access the foo element? Um, you would just, you need to use the, so basically the curlies in the, um, in the dollar sign are used whenever you want to start doing special stuff with the variable names. Um, so if you wanted to get to the foo element, the syntax would be like that. Um, so, I learn new stuff about Bash every time I go through the man page because there's so much there. But um, there's a whole class of things called, um, I think, race bracket expansion. Um, you can do stuff with strings like, um, let's say I have. and I want to print out var, but with B lowercase, I can convert, I can do a little uh, replace on there. Yeah. So there, there's a lot there, and you, you gotta, you know, I, I'm always going back to the bash man page and looking through. There's a whole section where they group together all those redirection operators that Andy went over. Um, section where they talk about globbing, uh, arrays, all the different types of expansion that turn kind of one token that you gave into a bunch of tokens, uh, and so on and so forth. Do you want to run like a quick example of a script that goes through and depends a word to the file every file on directory or something? Like, so like renames every file in the directory? I don't rename the files, but... So we... We created a test drive. So... I'm trying to think of something useful. I'll show you a function that I have in my bash RC. We'll go and then make this a little bit smaller though. Okay, so bash RC is basically a shell program that you run every time you log in. And uh, I'll just show you some cool stuff that I do that really helps me. One thing I do is I just set a whole bunch of variables to folders where my classes are. So I can just CD to $OS, for example, if I want to get to the operating systems class. Um, that's, that's a useful feature that you might want to take advantage of. Um, what else? Um, Bash has um, <coughs> the history mechanism of Bash is configurable. Um, I forget what the bolt means. But one of the ignores is that if I um, run a command with the space in front of it, it doesn't go in my history. Okay. So if you want to hide something that you did, just put a space in front of it. Um, the history um, is actually stored in a file called that bash history. I wanted to bring that up before, but I forgot. Um, so that's you know if you're, you're wondering where that list is coming from and why it gets saved after. Logins and logins house, it's in here. What else is in the Azure City? Um, so, like I said, some, some programs take their configuration through environment of variables, not through flags. Uh, PS is one of those. So, for example, um, uh, but um, I like a whole bunch of extra columns when I run PS instead of the default. So I set that as an option in my, my bash RC. Um, I have a function in here. It's all online, line, sorry. But um, it basically just um, runs env, removes some stuff that I don't ever want to see when I actually run env, and then sorts it. Because if I'm looking for something, it's difficult if they're, they're all out of whack. So my env. Um, is a, kind of like a nicer and even the default. If you want to run a command um, kind of raw without your, your overwrite, you 
put a slash in front of it. Yeah, like that. That'll, uh, so command is a, is a bash built in to make sure you're running the, the actual file and not, not the bash built in. And a lot of times you'll want to use that in a script because you want to know what you're working with. And if you know somebody else uses your script, you don't want your script to break because they have defined something that overrides what you're expecting. So this is your version of the ENV, right? What? This is your version of the ENV. No, this is the real version. So for that, you use command. To, yeah. Okay. Right. And then without it, I get my oh. sorted ENV that doesn't print out stuff that winds up printing colors. So I think we're kind of close to the end. Uh, do we have any questions on scripting, why it's useful? Did you want to know about scripting? So Bash is just one form of scripting. There's other, I mean, Perl and Python are the other two big scripting languages. Uh, the advantage to Bash is you have it everywhere. Perl and Python need to be installed on the system, but Perl is basically just a more, they took Bash and added things to it. Python's a completely different approach. Um, but there are, and they all work the same way. The only difference is that SHA being at the top of the file. So if it's slash bin slash bash, it's going to run it as a bash script. If you were, if it was a Python script, you'd have slash bin slash Python. Yeah. Or if it was a Perl script, it would be slash bin slash Perl. Um, you can actually do anything up here. You could do slash bin slash emacs at the top of your text file, and then when you execute your text file, it'll open it in emacs. So it's a really generalized mechanism. I mean, no one does that, right? But you could. Uh, it's a very generalized mechanism. Kind of so you're really starting to do stuff. Um, I mean, some people do that, but so if you want a program that gets, and this is how some of the man pages work, they just have like a, there's a file full of the man page that opens it in less because it has like a slash bin slash less at the top. So there's no real magic, it just follows the system. We'll stick around for a little while uh, if people have general questions or we just want to talk one on one. All right, we'll see you guys on Tuesday.